Last week I made a batch of fresh kimchi that I've been snacking on all week long. I've been eating it with rice, I've been eating it with kimbap, which is uh, Korean uh, sushi rolls. I've been eating it just out of the jar. It smells delicious. Ah. If you didn't see that recipe, I'll put a link in the description box below. If you could just take a second and do me a huge favor, go right down below and click that thumbs up button because that's how you tell YouTube that my channel is worthwhile and people should be watching it. So please click the like button and I appreciate all of your support. Thank you. This is an easy dish to prepare and it's packed with flavor and the perfect thing on a cold winter's night to warm you from the inside out. It's spicy but not too spicy and it's hearty and it won't make you feel too full but it will certainly satisfy you when you're craving that sort of warming, delicious stew. The kimchi chike is normally made from well-fermented sour kimchi. It often has some kind of meat added to it, whether that's beef or pork, and uh, topped with tofu as well. I don't have all the ingredients that I would normally put into a kimchi chige in my house tonight, but I still think that I can make something that'll satisfy my cravings for putting kimchi into stew. So I thought I would show you today how you can start with a base recipe that describes all the techniques and the flavors and build from that and improvise based on what you have on hand. You're not always gonna have everything that you need to make a dish according to a recipe, but you can always make something delicious. Now my kimchi is only a week old and I actually prefer to make uh, these kinds of cooked dishes that use kimchi, whether it's the stew or the kimchi pancakes or kimchi fried rice with well fermented kimchi, but I can smell that there's still a lot of flavor in this. Um, I prefer to let it rest and ferment for about uh, three to four weeks in the fridge before I cook with it. But oh, this kimchi that I made has so much flavor that I think it's gonna be really good anyway. I also don't have tofu or green onions in the house tonight. I know green onions are like the staple of Korean food. Everything has fresh green onions in it, but I think I can still make something delicious without it. So we'll, we'll keep going. To replace the meat in this dish, I'm gonna use Butler Soy Curls. This is a wonderful product. It comes dehydrated and it makes almost like a, um, a texture that's similar to chicken or beef slices. You can do all kinds of things with this. And I'll show you how I can use this easily without even bothering to rehydrate it. I'm just gonna throw it right in and cook this dish with the soy curls. Earlier today, I also cooked up a batch of chickpeas in my Instant Pot. So I'm gonna actually put that into this stew as well to provide some more heartiness to the dish. Because I don't have tofu on hand, I thought I would try to get some kind of a, a legume or, or a bean protein into this stew. Okay, where do I get my inspiration for Korean recipes? Well, I have a really dear friend who really is part of my family who is from Korea and she has taught me so much about traditional Korean cooking. She has cooked these amazing dishes for me. Uh, maybe someday I'll share that with you. Nevertheless, I've taken a lot of inspiration and learning from her to know how the flavors are developed in Korean cooking and how the different ingredients are combined to make authentic Korean food. So besides my dear friend from Korea, if I'm going to look on YouTube for Korean cooking recipes, uh, the go-to for me is the channel by Mangchi. Hello everybody! If you have never heard of Mangchi on YouTube, you obviously have never searched for Korean cooking. So Mangchi has a recipe for kimchi chike, which is actually pretty old now, but this is a video that I keep going back to every time I wanna make this dish, just to remind myself on how she put together this dish and prepared it, because she has just the right techniques and ingredients that can help you understand how these flavors of this dish come together. I follow her process pretty much as written, except for the fact that she doesn't make a vegan recipe, and so I'm veganizing this today. So she uses pork, and as I mentioned, I'm gonna replace that with soy curls today. Now, I didn't measure anything for this recipe, so I'm gonna to try to estimate the amounts as close as possible, and I think if you want to make this dish, the exact precise measurements aren't really that critical. You know, just put all those flavors into the pot and cook it, it's gonna be delicious. So come on and I'll show you how I'm gonna make an improvised Korean kimchi jjigae tonight with what I have on hand. I'm gonna start with a large heavy bottom pot 
This is a cold pot. I haven't even started to heat it yet. I'm just gonna put everything into this pot and then turn on the flame and let it cook. It really is that easy of a recipe. So the first thing we're gonna put in here is about a quarter cup of the kimchi juice. This is the brine that oozes out from the kimchi as it's fermenting. Put that into the bottom of the pan and then put in about one and a half to two cups of the kimchi. If your kimchi is in larger pieces, cut it down into more bite-sized pieces. Mine happens to be the right size that I think would be perfect for the stew. So just layer that right on top of that kimchi juice. For the meat component, I'm going to add a couple handfuls of butler soy curls. There's no need to hydrate these ahead of time. They'll hydrate just fine in the stew, so just sprinkle them on top of the kimchi. I'm adding enough to make sort of a layer uh, on top of the kimchi that I put into the pot. On top of the soy curls, I'm going to layer in one medium onion that's been finely sliced. And then I'm going to add the chickpeas. This is about, I'm going to estimate a can's worth of chickpeas, so 14 ounces of chickpeas. It's about a cup and a half or so, so about a can's worth. Now in Mang Chi's recipe, she adds sugar and salt to her stew. I think my kimchi is sweet enough that I'm not going to need any extra sugar, so I'm not going to add any to my stew at this time. Also, my salt level is probably okay with the amount of kimchi I have and the kimchi juice that I've added, so I'm not gonna add any additional salt at this point. What I will do is before I eat it, I'll probably adjust the salt at the very end. If it needs more, I'll add some. If not, it'll be just perfect the way it is. To the stew, I'm adding another tablespoon or so of gochugaru, that's the Korean red chili flakes, as well as a tablespoon of Korean chili paste called gochujang. This is uh, also providing a little bit more salt to the dish and some of that sweet chili flavor. These chilies from Korea are not too spicy. They're kind of sweet and spicy at the same time. And so I don't think you can really substitute the Korean red chilies, both in the kimchi and in these additional seasonings for anything else. But if you really had to and you couldn't find the Korean chilies, the best approximation, I think, would be some sweet paprika combined with a little bit of cayenne to add a little bit of heat to it. Now for the liquid, I'm adding a seaweed broth. If you follow Mang Chi's channel, you'll see that she cooked together dried uh, Japanese kombu or kelp with some daikon radish. I also don't have daikon radish on hand today. So I'm making about five cups worth of broth with a couple of pieces of that dried seaweed kelp called konbu, K-O-N-B-U, along with four dried shiitake mushrooms to give a little more umami to the broth. If you don't have any of this, you can certainly just add water to this or a vegetable broth of your choice. Mang Chi adds two cups of broth to her kimchi jjigae, but I'm adding about five cups, and for a couple of reasons. One, I think I have a little bit more ingredients, but also because I have those dried soy curls in there that's gonna absorb some of that liquid, and so I wanna make sure there's enough liquid in there to fully hydrate the soy curls. So what I wanna do is make sure that there's enough liquid just to cover all the ingredients I have in my pot. That turned out to be about five cups in this case. Lastly, I'm adding about a tablespoon of sesame oil. This is going to provide a wonderful nuance of flavor to this stew. Now just cover it and heat it to a simmer and cook it for about 15 minutes. After that, you can check it. If it's still too liquidy, cook it down a little bit more. If it's uh, got a little too dry, you can add a little bit of water to it. But cook that stew until it's to the thickness and the consistency that you desire. Remember, this is a stew, not a soup, so you don't want it to be too brothy at all. You want it to be thick and rich and hearty and delicious. This is typically served alongside of some white rice. I'm eating it just on its own today because I'm trying to cut down a little bit on my calories, and it's perfectly hearty on its own with those chickpeas. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped to inspire you to just cook with whatever you have in your refrigerator. If you like this video, please click that thumbs up button, subscribe for more content, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Pot Thickens.